This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel at www.tipsquirrel.com. For all kinds of Photoshop and Lightroom goodness, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or Facebook.com slash TipSquirrel. Hello everyone, my name is Mike Hoffman and today we're going to be looking at some adjustment brush tricks and tips within Adobe Camera Raw. And here we have an image and we're looking at it in the Camera Raw dialog box. This is a DNG file and I've opened it up in Camera Raw and we're ready to start working with it. This particular image could use a little more drama and we'll play around with it and see what we can do with it. Now the first thing we could try doing to bring some detail into this wood stork is to add some clarity and with Photoshop CS6 we can really rack the clarity out to maximum without really damaging the pixels in our image and that's a good thing but in this case when we do we get the effect across the entire image so in addition to bringing a lot of mid-tone contrast into the feathers of the bird which is what we want to accomplish we are also introducing a lot of clarity into the grass and the area around the bird which we don't want so how can we overcome this problem? Well, let's try just backing off the clarity and we'll leave a little bit of it in there because a little bit is good. But then we'll use the adjustment brush to bring some extra clarity onto the bird itself. And the adjustment brush is found here at the top of the camera raw dialog box. Now, if you're using Photoshop Lightroom, you have access to the same tools, but the interface is a little bit different. We'll click on the adjustment brush and now within CS6 you'll find that there are many more controls than there used to be within the adjustment brush panel. Once upon a time we would go to the adjustment brush and we would dial in some exposure or some contrast and now we have so much more. And one of the things that we have is clarity. So we can just run right in here and dial clarity way up and come in right over the top of this bird and we'll just reduce the size of the brush a little bit so that we're painting on the bird and we'll start running over the feathers adding that mid-tone contrast and the great thing about the adjustment brush is once you've added your brush strokes onto the image you can make adjustments afterwards and dial it into your heart's content so here we can adjust the clarity downwards or upwards and add more or less to taste. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and rack it all the way out to 100. And now we've got that really heavy duty clarity, that mid-tone contrast on the feathers of the bird. And when we hover over the adjustment pin, you can see the area that I've painted. Now, one thing that this contrast is doing is it's darkening up the feathers so we can add a little bit of exposure and use multiple controls within the same adjustment brush. So we'll add a little bit of exposure to brighten it back up again. Now, as if that's not enough, we're at 100 clarity. We can come up to the top here and click on New. And when we do, we can start painting again and we'll add an additional control with the same settings, getting even more clarity. And if you thought 100 clarity was a good thing, how about 200 clarity? We'll just paint right over the top of that. And sure enough, there you have additional clarity now. And you can keep layering these adjustments one on top of the other to build up the effect. Again, we can make an adjustment and we can reduce it down or bring it back and get the exact adjustment that we're looking for. And once again, we've got a little bit of exposure in here compensating for the darkness that the midtone contrast is bringing us. Now, while we're at it here, it might be a good idea to start a new adjustment brush. We'll bring the clarity back down to zero and the exposure as well, but we'll bump up the shadows and paint right over the face just a little bit. We'll get that laid in there and then we'll adjust again. 
and you can see we're bringing the detail back into the face where it was a little bit drowned out in the shadows. Now one more thing we can do. We added sharpness to the bird in this image, but we can also add a blur or a negative sharpness. We'll just click New on the adjustment brush. We'll zero out the shadows again, and this time we'll go with a negative sharpness. Let's go ahead and bring it all the way down to minus 100, and we'll bump up the size of the brush and just paint around the edges. And in doing so, we'll just add a little bit of softness to the background so that it's not distracting or attracting attention, we should say. And you can spend time and get that exactly how you want. And once you've laid down the brush strokes, again, you can dial in the level of sharpness, or in this case, the level of softness, to whatever you desire for the final result. In fact, it might be a good idea, since we're working with the background, to maybe take the exposure down just a little bit and darken it up. And remember, you're trying to draw the viewer's eye, so you're drawing from dark to light, from soft to sharp. And the adjustment brush allows you to tailor your image and really direct the attention where you want it. Once you've finished with the adjustment brush, you can just click on the hand tool or any of the other tools to go back to your camera raw controls and continue with your editing. The adjustment brush in Adobe Camera Raw and in Adobe Photoshop Lightroom provides a very powerful way of making non-destructive local adjustments to your image and really tailoring it to suit your own creative vision. As the versions of Photoshop have progressed, the controls and tools within the adjustment brush have progressed right along with it, and now we have an entire host of options available within the adjustment brush in Camera Raw and in Lightroom. I hope you'll learn to use them, and I hope you enjoy it. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of photography and Photoshop tutorials and related information there. Or you can follow me at mhoffman2001 on Twitter, and you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial.